Over the years, I've had some issues regarding anxiety and depression, and one of the things that I thought might help me would be to get a pug. I adopted a pug puppy. His name is Phil, and I've had Phil since he was eight weeks old and could fit in the palm of my hand. Before I got Phil, when I was feeling bad, I would look at pictures of pugs because they're so cute that they look like they shouldn't exist. They look like a gift from an ancient civilization that we've unearthed, and we're like, I can't believe that they made this. Phil can accurately be described as the runt of the litter, but what he lacks in size, he has magnified many times over in cuteness. His favorite things are hanging out on the couch with me, going on a walk with me, kissing my face, <laughs> and chasing a laser beam. We do that laser beam thing like you do with cats. I'm a novelist. I'd been having a little trouble selling a book. Finally, though, I got a break and this publisher asked me to write a book for them. And I was over the moon because this was guaranteed income. So I just toiled on this thing for months and months, kind of going through savings. And then after about nine months of really hard work, I got a call from my agent. She called and told me that the book contract was being canceled for reasons out of our control. I felt like I just need one break. And I thought that book was the break and then it broke. <laughs> So I hung up with my agents. I definitely very quickly wound up on the floor and I lay there for a while, just kind of spiraling down and Phil wanders into the room. Now, the thing about Phil is that if I'm laying down, if I'm bending over, if my face is in any gravitational way accessible to him, he will kiss it over and over and over. But instead of doing that, he saw me laying there and he did this thing that he had never done where he just kind of tilted his head back and forth like he didn't understand what he was seeing. Then he kind of trotted over to the other side of the room, got his favorite rope toy, and I thought he was going to bring it over to me to play and I was like, I'm not going to be able to play. But he didn't do that. He just kind of buried his face in my side, near my heart, which felt like it was breaking. In that moment, he did literally the one thing on earth that could unbreak it, which was just to love me. He loves me and doesn't want me to be hurting. And that's exactly how I feel about him.